Hi, I'm Christina and this is a book review of One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this was originally published in 2016 in America, but it's just been published in Britain for the very first time this year in 2022. I walked into my library, went straight to their new in bookshelf and it was just sitting there and I just immediately picked it up and I was so excited to see it there. I've actually only read one book by this author so far. I read Malibu Rising last year and I absolutely adored that book. It's one of my favourite historical fiction novels of all time now. It's a definite five star read and it was just so, so wonderful. And I was just so excited to read more of her books. I actually have two more of her more popular books sitting on my bookshelves, but when I saw this one and it was brand new in my library, I just had to read it first. So <laughs> there we are. And this is a romance novel. So Malibu Rising was more historical fiction and this is definitely more romance. And romance is a genre that I read very, very rarely, honestly, maybe one in five, six years. So it's definitely a different type of genre for me, but I absolutely adored this book. It was just so, so, so good. And I was just so connected to these characters and I was just so completely absorbed in the story. So much so that I read 170 pages of this book in one day. And that is that is so rare for me, honestly. I, I do not get to read that much normally in a single day, not for many, many years. And I was just completely captivated by this story. And I just had to know what was gonna happen and what she was gonna do. So let's talk a little bit about the premise of this story. So we have our main character, Emma, who is 31 years old, and it's the night of her father's 64th birthday, and they're having a celebration meal at her parents' house. So we have Emma with her fiance, Sam, we have her mum and her dad, and we also have her sister, Marie, and her husband. And they've just finished their meal, they're just about to go home, they're all saying goodbye, and Emma receives a phone call from her husband. So this is the man that she met in high school. They were high school sweethearts. It was her absolute love of her life. And she married him in her mid twenties. And then the night of their one year anniversary of their marriage, he received a job offer and he went and he was on a helicopter that crashed and he was presumed dead and never heard from again. And over a few years, Emma moves on and she starts dating a man called Sam. And I don't want you to think that's a spoiler at all because this is literally the first sentence in the book. And I have to say, I was completely hooked in the story from that first sentence. Very, very unusual for a first sentence to just grab me in like that. So it is, I am finishing up dinner with my family and my fiance when my husband calls. I was just sitting there just gasping and shocked because I hadn't read the back of the story, which it basically gives you the premise of, but it was such a great pull and hook into this story. And I just thought it was written so, so, so well. I was, as I said, completely engaged in this story. So most of the story is her coming to terms with the fact that Jessie is still alive and she obviously is still in love with him. Um, and she's also in love with Sam, her fiance, and she's just trying to make this impossible decision of who is she going to choose. But I think what I really liked about this story, it's not just about who are you going to choose, like who do you love more or any of those kind of questions. It's really more about who are you with these people. So the whole idea that every different type of love, every different kind of romance and relationship is obviously very different from one another. and. It's more about who you are with that person and where you want your life to be and how your life looks with that person and how you are with them uh, more than how much you love them. And I thought it was such an interesting discussion and it was so it was so well written and it wasn't just like this is the bad guy and this is the good guy or she wasn't trying to push you in a certain way to want her to be with one person. And I just thought it was a really interesting exploration of love essentially and just the way in which we feel for one another and when something awful happens like a massive tragedy like this and then for that to be completely like turn back time in a way in this kind of situation what would you do and what can you do is there going to be a right answer there very much isn't going to be and just what you're going to do in that situation and i just thought it was so interesting we see emma through the grieving period obviously for jesse 
and just seeing her state of mind in all of these situations i just thought it was so so interesting interesting concept haven't seen it done before in literature and yeah i was just so <laughs> so involved in this story um so it's a definite five star read for me i thought it was really really good and i thought it explored some really interesting topics and i really enjoyed all the characters i think my favorite character is the fiance sam just thought he was such a wonderful character um, yeah, and I thought it was really, really good. And the other thing is, it's more about how everything she is and everything she's ever wanted to be, how that can change and evolve over time. So when she first met her husband, Jesse, she was, you know, in her like late teens. And all she wanted to do was leave her hometown and go far away to university. She wanted to go to California. She wanted to be out in the sun. And then she wanted to just explore the world and go traveling, which was very different from her parents and her sister. So her parents own a bookstore, which I really like the inclusion of that. And um, their greatest dream is that their daughters run the bookstore when they retire and it's going to stay being Blair's Books. That's what it's called, that's their surname. Um, and that's not something that Emma wants at all. She wants a completely different life. That's not her dream at all. And Jesse, in a similar vein, is a wonderful swimmer and his parents very much want him to be an Olympian swimmer, make it a whole career, but it's just not something he adores. So they have that kind of kindred spirit element from the beginning that they both want something that's different from what their family and expectations are of them. And then we have Sam as a character who is someone who works in the bookstore when they were younger. And I just thought, yeah, it was just so, so good. And I'm hoping I'm not giving too much away because I want to try and be vague, but I don't think it's about the knowledge of actually what happens or who she's with. I think it's just exploring the characters and exploring their feelings for one another. That's really, really good. And at times it is very, very raw, the grief and just the way in which she loves two people at the same time, because obviously this is such an impossible, highly irregular situation. So yeah, I thought it was really, really good and I would highly, highly recommend it. And I know some more of her books are, her backlist are being published in other countries now, like in the UK. So I'm very much looking forward to reading those too. Let me just see, I'm sure there's another one coming out in my library. Yeah, so Maybe In Another Life is currently at my library too, so I'm on the waiting list for that. It's another one that's just been published this year in Britain, and I actually have her most popular two just sitting on my bookshelf that I haven't read yet. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. Just because I know I'm going to like them so much, I'm kind of keeping them and saving them, so they're just sitting there waiting. So yeah, if you've read this book, I would love to know your thoughts on it. Really, really interested to hear. So yeah, and I'd love to know your thoughts on any of her other books too. If you've read a lot of her books, definitely let me know which one is your favourite, which one you think I should read next. I think for me, because I've read two now, I don't think I could pick a favourite between this one and Malibu Rising. I think they're on par with each other as they're just as good as one another. And I really like them both, but for different reasons. And so I'm going to rank them both first at the moment. Really, really like both of them. I'm very much looking forward to reading her other books. And she has another book coming out this year in 2022, a brand new one called uh, Carrie Soto is Back. And I'm very much looking forward to reading that one. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Please like the video if you liked it and please subscribe if you'd like to see more of me talking about books. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.